Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And before we get into this episode brought to you by the Sports History Network, I wanted to tell you about another book giveaway that we have on the website. Our friend of the network, Timothy J. Brown, is giving away five copies of his latest book. This book is titled Hut Hut Hike, A History of Football Terminology. This book explores the history of football terminology by examining when and why more than 400 familiar words and expressions entered the game. By linking the game's evolution to changes in its language, readers learn the origins of first string, basic fundamentals, X's and O's, long snapper, and hundreds more of terms used in every football conversation or broadcast. Organized in easy-to-read, bite-sized chunks and filled with period images and illustrations, Hut Hut Hike tells football's history one word at a time. Now, to sign up for a chance to win your copy of the book, head to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash giveaways. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash giveaways. Now it's time to take a sports break. A look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great in sports history. And welcome to your January 13th edition of the Sports Break. We're going to talk about many, many, many great athletic heroes from the past that have did some remarkable things and got some major awards on January 13th. And uh, but before we do, let's make sure that you are aware that we have a great newsletter that comes out each and every day, 6.30 a.m., delivered right into your email in basket. And uh, no charge. You can cancel at any time. Really easy to sign up for. Go to the show notes of this very podcast or the top of jerseydispatch.com or pigskindispatch.com and and you will get all of the things that are happening in the world of the pig pen. That's Pigskin Dispatch. That's Jersey Dispatch. That's Orville Mulligan, sports writer, and Sports History Network as well. And uh, we're adding new things all the time. A lot of exciting things in sports history. So make sure you check that out. Now, let's get to those jersey numbers of January 13th. And there's a lot of them. So take note here because we're going to talk about numbers 99, 44, 70, 13, 32, 76, 86, 16, 39, 22, and 20, 21, 9, 23, 14, 7, and the number 10. January 13th, 1953 is our starting point. And we're going to go to the world of the NBA. And they had the third annual All-Star Game that took place at Allen County Coliseum in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It was the West beating the East 79-75 in a close game. And the most valuable player was number 99, George Mikan of the Minneapolis Lakers. I almost said Los Angeles, but it's the Minneapolis Lakers back at that time. He was the center for that team. January 13th, 1957, the 7th NFL Pro Bowl. The Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum was the place where many of these took place, and the Western Conference defeated the Eastern Conference 19-10. Most valuable players from that game were number 44, the kicker of the Baltimore Colts, Burt Reichachar, and defensive tackle Ernie Stottner, number 70, of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kind of rare for a kicker to be receiving uh, the most valuable player, but I guess with a score of 19 to 10, probably a lot of kicking going on there. January 13, 1962, Wilt Chamberlain in his number 13 jersey for the Philadelphia Warriors set an NBA record at the time, scoring 73 points in a contest against the Chicago Packers for a 135-117 win. This game has a high point total, still ranks third in the NBA record books. January 13, 1963, number 32, Jim Brown, who played for the NFL's Cleveland Browns, earned the offensive MVP honors at the NFL Pro Bowl game on this day as the Eastern squad downed their Western counterparts 30-20 at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Eugene Big Daddy Lipsum, number 76 of the Pittsburgh Steelers, was the defensive most valuable player for the same Pro Bowl game in 1963, the same one that Jim Brown just won an award for. And on January 13, 1963, we had the second American Football League All-Star Game at Balboa Stadium in San Diego, California, just down the road. The Western Division defeated the Eastern Division 21-14, and the game's most valuable players were the Dallas Texans running back, number 32, Curtis Clinton and the Los Angeles Chargers defensive end Earl Faison who wore the number 86 that season. 
January 13, 1965, it was the 15th NBA All-Star Game at the St. Louis Arena in St. Louis, Missouri, and the East defeated the West 124 to 123, a one-point game, and the most valuable player selected was the Cincinnati Royals forward, number 16, Jerry Lucas. On January 13, 1974 is our next stop on the timeline, and that was Super Bowl number 8. It was played at Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas, and on that date, the Miami Dolphins defeated the Minnesota Vikings 24-7. Most valuable player of that game was number 39 of the Miami Dolphins, running back Larry Zonka. January 13, 1981, New York Islanders number 22, the scoring machine, Mike Bossy's 15th career hat trick when he had four goals in that game that evening. And January 13, 1982, the baseball legends of Hank Aaron, who wore number 44 for his career, and Frank Robinson, number 20 for, for a majority of his career, were both elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame. In 1985, on the 13th of January, playing in his 436th career game, the Edmonton Oilers center, number 99 Wayne Gretzky, scored his 400th career NHL goal and added two assists in a 5-4 Oilers win over the Sabres in Buffalo. On January 13, 2001, the Atlanta Hawks retired Dominique Wilkins' number 21 jersey in a pregame ceremony at the Phillips Arena. Now he joins Bob Pettit, who wore number 9, and Lou Hudson, number 23, as the only Hawks to have their numbers retired. January 13, 2008, the Orlando Magic knocked down a then NBA record of, get this, 23 three pointers in 37 attempts in one game. Number 14, Jameer Nelson, went 5 for 5 from beyond the arc as the Magic defeated the Sacramento Kings 139 to 107. January 13, 2014, the FIFA Ballon d'Or, the Real Madrid and Portugal forward, number 7, Cristiano Ronaldo ended number 10 Lionel Messi's domination of the award as he took it home for there for 2014 uh, did Ronaldo and FFC Frankfurt goalkeeper number one Nadine Anger takes home the woman's award as the best soccer player in the world speaking of that award we had one in uh, 2019 on January 13th as well and Lionel Messi scored for FC Barcelona in a 3 to nothing win over Ibar and his 400th goal in La Liga. Now that becomes he becomes the first player to reach a mark in just one of Europe's top five leagues. Cristiano Ronaldo, he had 409 in Spain, England, and Italy. And those two names are definitely in the soccer world. We're talking 2014, we're talking 2019, and we're still talking Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo as the top players in the world. And those two definitely can put the ball on goal and so that is your sports history that we talked about today your sports break for january 13th and wow did we really cover a lot of bases from football to baseball to basketball to soccer we have it all going on here because there's a lot of great athletes out there that wore some great numbers and did some fabulous things and it's still happening each and every day uh you know watch the newspapers watch the news watch you know your your favorite youtube channels because because there's just some tremendous athletes doing some very remarkable things. And we try to capture as many of those as we can here on jerseydispatch.com. And in the football world, we try to do that on pigskindispatch.com. So make sure you check out those websites each and every day. Like we told you, that newsletter is a great way to see what's going on there as we try to preserve the sports history of the world. And, you know, if you listen to this podcast and you love sports history, well, I think you're going to really love uh, an affiliation that we have. And that's what the sportshistorynetwork.com uh, our podcast pigskin dispatch and jersey dispatch are both on there as well as orville mulligan sports writer that we are affiliated with and as well as 30 other great podcasts on there with some very talented individuals that are very knowledgeable and have some excellent guests that talk about sports history uh, on a daily basis there's something new coming on there and there's thousands of hours of downloads if you missed any and it's always relevant because it's history so make sure you check that out sports history network.com so tomorrow everybody have a great sports history day we're dribbling around and see the shot clock's almost out so we got to put up our shot and come back tomorrow for some more great sports history 
We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and we're able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know that. Can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website, seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.